Hello, welcome back to Red Faction Gorilla. I'm Jade Star. I'm Aramad PK. And last time everything went to hell. So close yeah, to it is. The commander died. Yeah. Rip Hugo Davies. Slash crackdown narrator guy. Wait, what? <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, he's declaring total victory over us. God damn it, I hate you, propaganda. Right, uh, what did I use to purchase? I don't know. Are being delivered to the base oh, yeah, radiation shielding, right. Yeah, Sam wanted you to get a load of scrap for radiation shielding. Yeah. Oh, it's not that much. No, it's it's really not. You can cross yeah. the irradiated field with no problems. I'd like to remind you that that was supposedly radiation plating for a vehicle. Stand a chance. Yeah. D just keep that in mind for the next couple of minutes. Because uh, I wanted a fast vehicle, so I chose this. Yeah. With its nice open canopy that somehow is going to block radiation. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> While you're thinking about that, also I'd like you to think about the fact that Mars lacks an ozone layer, and therefore the surface of Mars is bathed, bathed in a lethal dose of radiation every time the sun rises. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So not only have we solved apparently the, uh, the oxygen problem, uh, the the low pressure problem, but we've also given Mars an ozone layer. Apparently, yeah. Is that, e is that even a thing we could feasibly do? Yeah, with you could do that. You can make ozone real easy. Oh, okay. Um, ozone is just uh, it's oxygen. Yeah, it's, it's O3. Oxygen. Yeah, O3, and you can produce it using um, just electricity. Oh, okay. That's. I mean, you can smell ozone around electronic circuits. Yeah. Or right. well, you used to be able to. <laughs> I don't think that's the thing anymore. But when people used to use vacuum tubes and shit, you can smell those out. I was wondering how feasible the, the terraforming to prevent us from dying of a lethal dose of radiation just from the sun would be. But oh, it's, it's well, good to know that's that's pl actually plausible. We've gone into the many, many issues to do with <laughs> the terraforming of Mars throughout this LP. Yeah. Oh, um, I think I might have gone over it quickly, but this is the mission to go actually talk to the, the Marauders. Yeah. So this is where, I guess Sam is going to magically be there at the cutscene, but I guess this is us, supposedly, with Sam going to go talk to the Marauders. I, I want you to keep that in mind uh, when we get on the other side of the irradiated zone. That We're there to talk. Oh. Yeah. So here we are, the irradiated zone. It's, it's pretty unremarkable, but it's got a lot of ore in it that I was like, oh, I, I want to go mine you, but I'm going to take damage. Then I thought, yeah, well, maybe I can run him over. No, I picked the buggy, but I, I can't resist. And I figure I can hop out, take a little damage while I mine, hop back into the car. Right? Sure. And also, I found this. So also I definitely. That, yeah. yeah. This is important. Oh. The shuddered. I could hear the rending of metal, the scream of the passengers. Then the ship was torn asunder, and bodies filled the sky like angels. Well, that's nice. Oh, actually, okay. I, that's not the one I thought it was. I think I find another one. But also, <laughs> I'm, I'm not taking damage in the irradiated zone anymore. No, anymore. You, oh. you installed the plating under your skin. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his trench coat. Uh, so that... That log does give us a little more idea about the origin of the Marauders, though. It definitely starting to sound like a colonizing ship broke up and crashed over the Badlands of Mars, or somewhere over Mars. Yeah, I guess okay. it had to be fairly late into the colonization, considering there would have had to be, you know, atmosphere, and yeah, they not lethal to... doses of radiation yeah. for them to survive to become Marauders in the first place. But it definitely sounds like a colonist ship got lost on the way to Mars. I think I need a more detailed explanation than that, to be honest. 
what, the colony ship got lost on Mars and... Yeah, like, why didn't they get in contact with the people who were already here? I mean... Well, they're on the wrong side of the irradiated zone. Okay... Without, you know, communications, because their ship exploded. I don't know. I prefer the idea that they were just, so sort of people who, like, gone into the bush, <laughs> Um, well, that way they'd be indigenous natives and you wouldn't feel so bad about colonizing them. Your car also doesn't seem to be taking damage from that weapon. Oh, it is. It is. It's telling you that it is. Oh, that's, that's nice. It's not a <laughs> particularly great anti-vehicle weapon. You killed the guys out of it. Yeah. Remember, we're here to talk. Yeah. Well, they don't know that yet. I guess. Oh, I see. Maybe these just the radiated sign was covering the vehicle health bar. Hmm. Or replacing it. Yes. So this... Is, uh, this is Marauder City, I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah, look at all those dots on the radar. And they're still shooting. Oh, me. Dear. Uh. Hi guys, uh. I need to I need to use your bridge real quick. I oh a, no! Yeah. Oh no! No, it's fine, it's fine. I just had a little trouble to jump back. <laughs> they call themselves marauders now. The most brilliant minds of our time are now Stone Age savages. We're scientists, not witch doctors. There's another okay. interesting log that the marauders were, again, colonists or even scientists uh, at one point. And that they've apparently degenerated to this sort of tribal state? I guess. It's interesting, but also, just keep in mind that she explicitly said that the Marauders had been scientists. Yeah. Just keep that line in mind. Stuck down there with your melee weapons. Um, don't destroy the bridge. Yeah, well, I got a jetpack, it'll be fine. Besides, you know my feelings about bridges. It's cool, they're they're worshipping an idol. I'll just you know, sneak past. Nope. Oh no, they noticed you. Ah. They're getting stabbed oh, shit, the birds. Shit, shit. It's fine, I got this, I got this. I got a jetpack and they don't. I also have an attention span slightly longer than a goldfish. Sure, the Marauders will be only too happy to help. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is how Mason, like you know, rides in with a white flag of diplomacy. Yeah. I mean, most of them won't leave corpses, so you can't even blame Mason. They're just missing, you know.
I, I don't even know what that guy was doing. So, yeah, we, we totally come in peace. Yeah. Uh, you better be right about this. Trust me. Mason, this is Vosha, my sister. You have brought an outlander. He defiles this place. Well, I guess you got all the charm. You, show us the forge. Not until we have a deal. With the forge, we can destroy the Hydra. A ship in orbit is too distant. Not if you bring the accelerator online. The shell would have the velocity to reach its target. It is not impossible. What? You marauders are rocket scientists now? You outlanders think us beneath you, and your mistake grants us power. Give us the forge! It stays with me. You get these freaks in control, or I start vaporizing. You failed to protect the forge! This man kept it safe! Sister, you forget who you are. He is not one of us. No, but he has fought for you. And if need be, he will die for you. Now, wait a minute. If it means a free Mars. Free for everyone, Vasha. There is no time to bargain. When you've readied the accelerator, we'll bring you the forge. Very well. But remember, this planet is rightfully ours. It will be returned to us. We don't pull this off. And all she'll be holding is a fistful of dust. Yes, Mason, they were rocket scientists. Fuck! <laughs> they literally were rocket scientists. Or at least maybe, but they were scientists. Yeah, didn't you re listen to that audio log, Mason? <laughs> if this plan doesn't work, we're all dead. Oh, I'm so glad I found that log before going into that cutscene. Yeah. The Marauders seem pretty interesting. It's a pity that they're only being introduced properly now, really. Yeah. It would have been nice to have, like, a little subplot going. So all this doesn't come as a complete, just out of the blue. Well, I mean, Sam as a Marauder was not out of the blue. No, but, the like, everything else about the Marauders. Yeah. Now, there isn't really, like, an explanation that leads up to the, the next mission. Uh, like, you're kind of wondering, like, what do we do now? I thought we were waiting for the uh, accelerator to come online. I mean, Crackdown Narrator Man is, is gone and doesn't really kind of give us the, uh, the segue to each new segment. But the next mission makes sense in the context of things. It's a fun okay. one, too. They just didn't have the narrative glue, really, to to string them together quite as well as I would have liked. Nice. Thank you. It's a shortcut. We can build a better Mars. I Those still bother me, but there's no point in destroying them anymore. <laughs> Get the alert to green before you start this mission. And now I've just made myself sit around. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. And while we're here and waiting, let's see, uh... Mars contains the largest labyrinth of intersecting canyons in the solar system, called the Noctis Labyrinthius, the yeah. Labyrinth of the Night. See, there we go. It was totally planned. When the EDF destroyed our base, people lost hope. They need to know the Red Faction is still alive. They need to know we won't give up. We have Vosha and the Marauders, but it's not enough. We need our friends, Mason. We'll use the voice of Mars to get the word out. We'll take control of their building and transmit a special broadcast. The EDF has spoken for our planet long enough. It's time we give Mars a new voice. I guess it also explains Sam's weird accent. 
Oh, I told you, she's Martian. It's just a Martian accent. <laughs> or are you trying to insinuate that Marauders have their own dialect and accent? Yeah. Eh. I mean, Vorsha spelt Vasha sounded a bit like her. Although she had a weird mask on, so. Yeah. Let's go see the voice of Mars. I still can't believe you're a marauder. I left a long time ago. Marauders are consumed with anger and hate. I didn't want to live like that. So you went to live with a colonist. Life was hard, but people never lost hope. It's why I joined the Red Faction. The marauders still listen to you. Because Vasha is my sister. And we have the forge. For now. Yeah, we'll just see about that. I kind of like that, that Mason's like, you know what, uh, I'm not sure I really want to give up this uh, vaporizing rifle to those people. <laughs> it is real useful. Yeah. I suppose if Mars is free, you'll never have to vaporize anyone ever again. Well, have to, being the operative. <laughs> I mean, this, this is Alex, uh, space asshole Mason. I'm sure people are going to get vaporized in his uh, vicinity, you know, whether or not Mars is free or not. He'll just hit them so hard with a sledgehammer that they evaporate. Oh yes, oh speaking of which, you're gonna enjoy that in this video. Um, right that's what EBF has done challenging me to chicken and losing. Yeah. Actually got mileage out of the uh, the front mounted machine guns on these things. They, yeah, uh, it almost seems like they're aiming better now. Um, I think that I don't think they are. <laughs> but it, I would be surprised if somehow they were somehow aiming better. But I mean, look at that—they shot that guy right out of the turret. We're here. Let's secure the building. He's still alive though. That's a different guy. It's an APC. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, like, I... The only thing I could think of, and I really doubt it, would be that Mailman's patch somehow improved their aim. That would be ridiculous. Clear, Sam. Let's get this show started. Well, <laughs> the hell? Here's the recording I made. Let's hope this works. Rip set piece she was supposed to interact with? I am broadcasting this message to all the people of Mars. My name is Simonia, and I am a member of the Red Faction. More EDF incoming! We are fighting to end the oppression of our planet. Our leaders have abused and tortured us. They have seized our property and driven Keep us Keep the our EDF home. away from the station! They have killed our brothers! in the street, in the mine, and in the factory. Let's see, is this where the fun begins? Because they think they are stronger than we are. Eh, uh, kind of. Oh dear. They have more soldiers. Ooh, man, that guy is surprisingly bouncy. The EDF believes Don't let them use the bombs! They'll destroy everything! What bombs? Uh, you'll see, I think I let one of them survive long enough. Uh, remember the space bombs that I've used before? Right, yeah. They will start planting that around the building and the antenna. Oh, fuck. Oh, what the? <laughs> wow. I just launched that man into a low orbit. Don't let them shut us down! Also, don't destroy the building yourself accidentally. By flogging EDF soldiers through it? Yeah. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh, this is why when the history books are written, Alec Mason must seem like the biggest asshole ever. And potential war criminal. I gotta say, the EDF response for this 
is slightly underwhelming. It's it's you know a couple of dudes trickling in. Like that APC was the yeah. biggest concentration so far. God, that's so much fun. Yeah, you would have thought that there'd be a few more coming at once. Yeah. But the Marauders are not enough. We need you. This should be a bit more challenging, shouldn't it? Yeah. It's supposed to be a near end game. Uh, maybe stand a bit further away next time you do that. <laughs> maybe. It's fine, though. I mean, at least it didn't go all Nova like they're supposed to. <laughs> I love this sledgehammer so much. Thank you, mailman. The drill kept us down, Mason. We did it. I just hope the message got through. Yeah, didn't that seem like a little bit easy for a defense mission? It was real easy. Yeah, I just dicked around with the sledgehammer for the majority of it. Yeah, look, at, look at those machine guns. I got all three of those targets on. Uh... And then you can watch it track the target behind the APC. Yeah. So I really do think that somewhere uh, these vehicle mounted machine guns actually learned to aim. A new ride. Ramming yeah, it's cars. getting, getting to good. that point. Whoa. Maybe we'll make it. It's getting a little smoky. But I'm finally glad that we shut up the uh, the voice of Mars. Well, have you? Well, I, I mean, I guess that's a good question. I mean, well, we hijacked the voice of Mars and broadcasted yeah. our own propaganda. I guess maybe afterwards we should have, like, just exploded the place, you know? Just so that they can't use it again. I mean, also, it was an opportunity to explode something that we passed off, and I'm sad. I love the noise this shark's making, indicating it's in distress. <laughs> the engine knocking. Like, th this truck is a war hero. It's gonna retire with honors after this one. <laughs> Yeah. Diving for no reason. Like, I got you guys. I think this classic, I'm trying to throw myself out the way, but I've thrown myself into. Yeah. In Earth news, Eduardo Salazar was assassinated yesterday outside his home in Lima, Peru. An outspoken advocate for the people of Mars, Mr. Salazar frequently broke ranks with his colleagues in the Earth Defense Council. His resolution to establish a roadmap for Martian independence was soundly defeated in the council last month. Mr. Salazar was 67. Oh. Two former Red Faction terrorists attacked and commandeered a Voice of Mars station today to broadcast a message calling for the death of all residents in EOS. Wait, all what? That wasn't our message. <laughs> from EDF Central Command in EOS. General Roth is advising all residents to be on the lookout for Alex Mason. The suspect has been involved in multiple... There's something odd about that picture it, they have of Mason. That's not you. No, that... that. I mean, it's the right coat and everything, but there's something I can't... It's on the top of my head. I can't think of it that's different. <laughs> Mason is extremely dangerous. If you have any information regarding his whereabouts, contact the EDF immediately. This is the voice of Mars Broadcasting System, a service of the Earth Defense Force. <laughs> I just really like that picture. 
Well, rip Eduardo Salazar. Yeah. Peruvian uh, council member in support of independent Mars. Yeah. Also, rip like Mason's luxurious head of hair. <laughs> but uh, things are heating up. I'm liking this. It's it's getting interesting. It's good times. Is that guy smoking? Yeah. What? We can't have smoking in our free Mars? Well, I'm just used to the idea that oxygen should be uh, scarce <laughs> in space. Right, no smoking on Mars. Preserve that O2. Yeah. All, all that, most of that oxygen had to be imported. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just giving Earth jobs, you know, at the oxygen farms. I suppose there's plant life around now, changing it from CO2 into oxygen again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss the further implications of smoking in Mars next episode. Uh, but for now, uh, that's it for today. Uh, I've been Jade Star. I've been Araman PK. And we'll see you next time. Bye.